Hey there golfers, I'm Drew Mahol, the Second Swing Golf, and today we have a special treat for you. We are joined today by Mark Brooks. Mark Brooks is a major champion, won the 1996 PGA Championship, seven-time PGA Tour winner. Um, we're down in the Texas store today, and Mark, first of all, thank you for joining us. This is going to be a lot of fun. You bet. Um, we're really interested in what we've got planned today because you brought in a couple old clubs that you played kind of during your tour days, and so uh, we're going to do a couple of sort of head-to-head -head tests and comparisons, but... Um, you got a seven iron right now, so let's talk to me about that club. Um, looks like Ben Hogan Apex. This uh, is a Hogan Apex. So this how long, or you know, how um, how long did you play that? When did you play that? Uh, give the viewers some insight into that iron. So this particular iron, this was what's commonly referred to as the '99 Apex. Okay. So it was developed in '97 and '98, and Tom Kite had a lot to do with this, you know, okay. with the R and D mm -hmm. uh, part of this design. It's just a classic muscle back blade. It's a little longer heel to toe than a lot of clubs were at the time for, for blades. So it was pretty attractive to guys mm -hmm. because it looked a little more friendly sitting down there behind the ball. I guess a little side note, this is the model Bernhard Langer, who's played oh, yeah. some really good golf yeah. the last, you know, like- He's okay still. Like yeah. 60 years. <laughs> he kept, so mo this model in his bag for a long time, I'm talking about up until like a couple of years ago, he had like the three, four and five iron in this model. Wow. So pretty interesting. This model stood the test of time. Uh, they, of course, back then, most clubs, the tour, tour guys played, had some modifications, meaning yeah. a little bit of shaping. Sure. Like this one's got the toe ripped on it. Mm -hmm. uh, heels been pulled off, you know, to try to keep it out of the ground. Uh, but generally speaking, this was a very typical club of let's call it the late eighties through the early all the way through, well, I'll just ju jump to the chase, pre-solid core golf ball. Yeah, yeah. I don't have to give anybody a plug. <laughs> and that changed in, in mass mm -hmm. in 2002. Yeah. So a lot of people wonder what year it was. Well, it came out in the fall of 2001, yep. that one. And 02, by the by middle of 2002, I'm gonna say 90% of the tour players had switched over to a let's call it a solid core ball. Yep, and then that, I know we've talked that a That started bit. changing things. That changed a lot of things for the way the game was played entirely. Uh, and I imagine that led to a bunch of different equipment changes, but kind of through that time, you were still playing the sort of Ben Hogan 99 model iron. We did, and a lot of guys obviously still play blades today. Yeah. And there were just there were hardly, I will say this, the ball change affected the sand wedges and let's just say the mid to short irons less. Sure. They just went further, yeah. launched higher. And guys didn't, most people didn't hate that. But the problem started occurring in the long irons and the woods, the drivers in particular, drivers that were made for a, you know, liquid center yeah. wound blot of golf ball did not do well mm -hmm. with the new technology yeah. of the golf ball. So big driver changes. Mm -hmm. uh, and primarily most of that was due to spin rate, to right. be honest with you. So they started really getting to work and it didn't take them long. And they had some drivers at vomit, which they're, that's why we're talking about yeah. a ball, a rollback on the golf ball. Exactly. And I think so. it, I think people almost underestimate how much really that golf ball changed everything in golf equipment because it. I mean, obviously, it just is one golf ball model, but it went and it kind of, you know, the ripple effect was everything else in the bag from irons to you know wedges, the driver. So, uh, but this is this is what R and D was like back in you know the nineteen nineties. This yeah. is what you produced. This is what you were playing on tour, winning tournaments and winning majors. So. Um, what I'd like to do today is have you hit, you know, five to 10 shots with sure. that iron. And then maybe we'll go into what's in your bag now with the I-230 and we'll hit a few with those. And then we'll maybe come back and we'll look at some data and we'll, we'll see, kind of give your, get your feedback on how, how different the feel is, how different the look is, and of course the performance. And I'll add this point. What's very, the other interesting part is I've had the fortune to be with several different manufacturers mm -hmm. over the year, over the years and I've been doing it quite a few years. It's amazing when now that I'm, you know, it's, we're whatever, 40 years past, how actually incredibly smart and innovative they were with a rudimentary prototype model mm -hmm. versus today's CAD, AI, all the oh, stuff. Yeah. They were darn good with a pencil and a piece of paper and grinding wheels. It's a completely different process. Now. It is, but they were good at it back then. So, yeah. I mean, they're, they're still going back and looking at designs that were created in the 60s and 70s and there's yeah. just been some brilliant people i think in my opinion a lot of what's helped it gets them uh, to market way faster 
Mm -hmm. and it cuts down on the testing and the sure. failed project time. Yeah. But what the end result, I mean, the guys with the, the really good guys, pencil and paper, and they can figure it out pretty fast. So it's right. pretty interesting, but it cuts down on the R and D, you know, the time it takes to get to a good product. Absolutely. Yeah. That's fascinating uh, to, to see how that process has changed over time. So um, you ready to hit some swings? Sure. Here? We'll give it a shot. Let's give it a go. It's a pretty good looking golf shot. Yeah, it's pretty straight. <laughs> not gonna, it's not gonna go very far, but. Well, so, and that's interesting because you, so you mentioned that you, uh, you're playing the seven iron about 160, 162. Um, I imagine this was, was that, was that pre new golf ball? New oh, that would have court? been pretty new golf ball. Oh, what? Yeah, okay. Let's say new golf ball. Cause you're hitting the ball really, I mean, your carry number is just slightly shorter than that, but it's nothing, you know, you're not losing a ton of distance, as you might think. At least the that's one swing. The height isn't bad. That's 90, 90. And we we mentioned that earlier that, you know, our short irons didn't change dramatically. We're going to see that in a minute with this this little fairway wood. Oh, yeah. I suspect. And that spin rate's obviously a little low. Um, we can talk about that as we're going through here. Send you another one. Carbon copy. Maybe a little left. Ooh. The hair left. I like to see the, the carbon copy, the same golf swing. Is that what, did you normally play a draw? I did. I you was did? definitely a draw player. I suppose if you said you were a lower spin player, that kind of does. So you would, spin. if I needed to stop it, I would go for a cut. Is this the cut? This is the cut coming out. Oh yeah. And you can see it's very, very slight. But it works. Spin rate should have gone up a little bit. Just a little bit it did, yeah. So I would go, you can see I, I can, I, I tried to hit that up in the air a little bit. I'll go for one more cut here. Club is definitely slipping around with these old. Yeah, that's an old grip. Old green Vix. There's a little slight cut. All right. Nice. Let's go, let's get one more kind of stock shot here. All right, let's go to the draw. Actually, I'll go to the really truly stock into a little breeze. I like it. I'm going to have to get the grip up here. <laughs> so we're going to go for the, let's call it a going cut draw. It's a lot of descriptive words on that. Oh yeah, that's cool. Little thin. Look at that. Got to go one more. See the carry jumped to 62 there. Mm -hmm. Definitely overdid it. Spin rate came down, height came down 20 feet. It's kind of a low draw. That was definitely a low draw. Let's send one a little more to the right like it should be. Square around. There's going to be a start right draw. There oh, yeah. you go. A little overdone. Yeah, this is this is fun. This is fun to watch. <laughs> so you kind of get a lesson. So how did I draw it? I pushed it back in my stance of hair. I definitely aim more to the right. Change the path. You swing out to first base. Well, let's just go to second base. That was probably swung to first. There's the duck hook. There we go. <laughs> Edit that one out. <laughs> so what was that? That was simple. That path was out there, but the face was too closed. That's the nice thing about this, this track, man, too, is we got all these, the path, face to path and face angle numbers right here. So Your if this was my warm up session, I would, I would aim more right today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have time to fix it. I would just aim a little more right. So you can see the height came down 73 to, to under 80 with the draw. Okay. So. I'm going to bring this, this up here. So you got a few, sw these are kind of, eh. I think really these first four were kind of, it's more of your stock swings and you started to play with that low draw. But so you're kind of looking at, you know, carry about 153 total 162. We actually, it's funny. You said 162 as a, as a carry number, um, back when you were younger in your, in your yes. tour days. So, um, I like that. And your average curve, you hit a couple draws, hit a couple fades, you're at two feet on average of curve. You had some going right, some going left. See there? You yep. had a couple left, a couple right. Uh, so talk to me now, because we're gonna I kinda want you to switch to your, your gamer your gamer seven iron. But as you make that that switch, you look down at that club now. Is there like what do you see different compared to what you just hit? Like what is the first thing that jumps to your mind as you look at that one? Friendly. Friendly, yeah. more friendly. So it's, 
I mean, it's still a seven iron. The loft, honestly, is not a, a huge difference between these two. Although, mm -hmm. you know, so I have my seven iron at 33 degrees. Okay. That one's probably at 33 or four. Is it? Okay. Because it's sort of tried to be modern. Yeah. And because that, that club's not ancient. You know, that, yeah, club's yeah. Is for, that club's only about 25 years old, 24 yeah. years old. But okay. the difference is, I mean, they did such a beautiful job with this one, which a lot of people do, but the transition from the hosel into the, into the leading edge is really nice, mm -hmm. even though it has probably similar, if not a little more offset than that golf club. But the, my first take is it just looks easier to hit, yeah. period. It's just, a, it's just easier to hit. Sure. Probably just a little larger. It's a little bigger, not way bigger, but a little bigger. And even though I hit that thin, it'll go further. It will go further. And it'll go higher. And it'll go, yep, and it launched higher. So that went to 105 feet without yep. even trying. And yep. I, I shoot for that. I shoot for about 100 feet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And that makes up for my spin rate being too low. Mm -hmm. So that was probably a pretty decent so shot right you there. Think, you think that's that's because the, the of the design of the club, maybe a little bit more weight is kind of lower by, in the sole? The weight's distributed a little better in, in this golf club for sure. I have a little bit lighter shaft. Okay. This is 105 gram. Probably actually this one in an S, it probably is close to that. It's probably yeah. 108 grams. It's the Nippon yep. 105. And so that shaft I had there, that's likely an S400. So I've, I've oh, scrubbed sure, off yeah. about 25 yeah. grams there, which I was able to add back into the head. Mm -hmm. So I got a heavier head with a lighter shaft. And I was going to point out earlier, <clears throat> excuse me, the one thing that hasn't changed through all of the technology is the physics. Right. And that's where they've been, that's where they're really, really been brilliant is using, figuring out how to better use physics. Mm -hmm. So they take weight out where you didn't need it. They put it where it as is effective. I can create, I can send more energy into this golf ball with yeah. pretty much the same effort. So mm -hmm. that yeah, wasn't a bad you're, shot. You're, you're putting the same swing on it essentially. No I know. doubt. I mean, just because of, like you said, the physics, your swing speed picked up because of the weight of the shaft being different and then the ball launched higher because more of that weight's down low. If you were fitting me, yeah. this session would be over. <laughs> you just got me yeah. 13 yards, On 15 one swing. feet higher, the same or better spin. And if you look at my curve, where's, what did it curve? 16 left, that's in feet. Mm -hmm. So that's a, well, it's a five yard draw. A five yard draw, that's my shot. Yeah. So I could actually play that, I could aim that. So we'll go again. That was in the middle of the face. Still a draw. Oh yeah. And there's your start right draw that I was kind of asking for. Tiny draw. There you go. Four, yep. Five yard draw. Five yard draw again. How many five yard draws in a row can Mark Brooks hit today? Yeah, this is this is great. This is fun to watch. So we we can point out. We'll we'll throw a little lesson in here. And uh, I love it. Contrary to a lot of. The, the chatter that you get on, on the air these days, good draw players miss to the right. Yeah. Good hookers miss to the right. Good faders miss to the left. So whatever you're, you've heard, it's, this, this is a fact. Mm -hmm. A draw player, I, I was one, I, was, I, I hung around them too. Yeah. We like to miss the ball just right of the target. If it started crossing the target, we were curving it too much or something was off. Yeah. So we always were drawing the ball back to the target. So our miss was always a little right of it, a little right of it. Every once in a while, you'd get it just right, come back in. If it started crossing the target line, same thing with a driver. If I was, this was a driver hole, I'd be looking down the right side of the fairway, trying to move it to the center. Yeah. If it started moving across the center line, I'm either curving it too much or my start line's bad. Yeah. So good, it also would tell you why I like right to left putts. Most greens yeah. are tilted back to front. You miss to the right, you got a right to left. I suppose. I suppose. So if that you start overdrawing it, yep. you start all of a sudden you go, man, every putt I got's left to right. I go, you're probably over, you're missing left yeah. to the hole. It's really simple. So it's another tidbit into kind of just the course man how, how golf courses are too, like the, the back to front greens and stuff. A little fatty, but I got away with it. So if we hit the screen a little bit lower. 80, 85 feet, uh, 87. 87. I And there's your tight draw. So what, when would you hit that kind of shot? Because I want to hit it 175 yards in the air. <laughs> there you go. Spin rate came way down. Yeah. So I'd have to play for some definitely. The rollout, yeah. Yeah, no doubt. 
So Is that this, probably like a back pin, back left pin or something? Well, this will be another course management. Good, we don't play to the pin yardage. Yeah, right. We play to the carry number, adding either it's gonna stop, so that would be, you know, that would be when I'm uh, painting my numbers, okay? Just, if I'm gonna try to carry it 175, the green soft, that's, mm -hmm. far, that's how far it would go. Maybe go jump forward a foot. But if I had, for example, in this shot, for fairly firm green, if I had 185 or 190 yards to the hole, but plenty of green to land it, I could actually hit this golf club. Mm -hmm. that, this ball is going to release 40 or 50 feet. Right. A little stock seven iron. Let's go for one cut here. So I need to path left. A little push cut. You could feel oh, yeah. that. Look at that. The face angle is open. The club path is closed. And that's how you hit a cut. <laughs> the problem is that started to the right. So in, in my world, I, I would hate that. So. Because you want to see the cut start left of the target left. line. I want left. I just bad. said a good cut or misses left. That one started left. Oh, yeah. Still a little bit overcut, but you could live with it. It's just a few feet right of the hole. And then you got, well, and that you, was And that was a more quality strike because that carried yeah. You got the 140 on the smash. So you see what happened to the spin rate. Mm -hmm. That nasty beater sting and low draw only spun about 4,200. That one spun almost 6,000. That's where I would need to be generally. Yeah. So unfortunately, even though I love to play the draw, I have to think and play tiny little cuts a lot. Yeah. Just to have control, sure. grip, you know, have the ball stop on the green. So here's Pretty a question. Pretty good height too. Here's a question for you. Yeah. Um, and, and, I, and you said you don't play a ton now, but in hitting these shots, do you think you can work the ball better or worse with the newer club versus the old club or is it pretty similar? Pretty similar, okay. to be real okay. honest with you. It, it's pretty similar. I'm going to say the driver might be a little more difficult to work. Yeah. That's probably more of a combination ball, length of the club, Yeah, the bulge and roll, not as much as it used to be, although they're trying to put some back in. Yeah. Um, I would say the irons are not that much different. The ball doesn't curve as much, so that, that's where that's we start. True. Yeah. So we start with a, a ball that curves, in my humble opinion, almost half what a what a pre 2000 ball would you can yeah. move you can move, in fact you can move those balls way more than you can these so mm. uh, that's one reason you see balls guys you know that these kids are when they say they play, hit, hit it straight you go what's your shot and they'll say well it's straight i mean it probably isn't actually straight but, but it's close. only a couple of yards yeah. a couple of yards either way um, that would have been a lot harder to do back in the day to just go out there and play a straight shot impossible <laughs> nobody, nobody even said the word. Yeah, yeah. If you hit it straight, it was an accident. <laughs> so, you know, we have a, a round ball with a flat, actually pretty milled flat face. Pretty hard to make it go straight. Yeah, I suppose. So, I don't, I don't go for straight very often. Right. It's sort of an let's, accident. Uh, let's see a couple more here from you. There's my shot. Right there. well, you've got the swing still. That's, that's a very much a fact of, of watching this. You're hitting that's, every shot you want to hit. <laughs> so that that's my shot, right? Yeah, there. I don't. I mean, we can end on that one if you want to. Absolutely, that I mean, was that's, that's stock for me. But what's just ridiculous <laughs> is how much further and higher and quality the shot was. Yeah. Especially for today's tests. Right. I mean, this is just a joke. Easier. It's not even funny. So this is kind of your. Let's bring up the. So this is. This is sort of the, the best shot you hit today with the I-230, right? I would agree. That was let's, a nice uh, shot. Let's find, let's see. You know, here's maybe, we'll play the, here's a draw. Here's, a, here's let's go with that one. Yeah. That's the difference. So we have this one, which was a 153 carry to 163 total with the old, you know, Hogan Apex 99. Might point the height, yes, sir. The height at 84 feet, okay. And then we go to the I-230, which is this last shot here. And you've got it at 107 feet, 169 carry, 177 total. Um, so that's kind of the difference, I guess. And we, we talked about the swing speed differences with the shaft, a little bit longer shaft too. That might change things obviously a little bit, but you just you were just saying how much easier it is to hit. Let's also point out people, that these are far more accessible. Yeah. For people to get in, get, you know, get in mm -hmm. front of TrackMan or, or you know, launch monitors. So everybody, you know, they talk about spin. Everyone's, well, what should my spin be on a seven iron? Unfortunately, the, the, this 
notion that your seven iron should spend seven thousand. You know, oh, it's the it's the number on the club mm -hmm. at you know times a thousand. That's really too high for the majority of players. I know I've seen you talk about it. And one of the best, for one, when they started this, clubs were probably a little weaker, and and they're testing a lot of great players with super high club head speed. Yeah, yeah. That's number one. And lower launch, by the way. If you look at the tour player's launch, it's usually quite a bit lower. Higher spin, higher speed, but lower launch. Yeah. Okay, so one of the th calculations that I was told by a great fitter here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area as well was to use 850 times the club. Oh, okay. And it's sort of like, if you can get to, if you start dipping below that number, all of a sudden you're like, ooh, you got, a, you got an issue. You better start launching up yeah. or, or deal with it or look at the golf ball you're playing. But 850 times the club, number on the club with a nice, decently high launch is actually probably more effective for most people. Okay, so that's when, a good rule of thumb. If they're then. in their seven iron at 7,000, to be honest with you, for most of these golf clubs, the game improvement, if you're if a guy's producing 7,000 on a seven iron at 32 degrees or 31 degrees, he's got a swing problem. Yeah. <laughs> he's probably cutting across, hitting down yep. across, and with a wide open face. So yep, and it's probably going like that. Going like that. Yeah. yeah. There yeah. you go. Well, Mark, this was uh this was awesome. Uh to see the to see the two different seven irons. This is probably what, 20, 25 years of technology. So yes, sir. um I guess this gives a little glimpse into A what you know, the golf shots you played during your day, your, your days on tour, but also be just how, you know, the technology has come. And that's, we're talking about players irons where not really a ton technology wise has changed it that much. It's just, no, no doubt. Um, cause now, you know, in this next video here, we'll get into some woods and maybe we'll see some bigger differences there. But, um, Mark, thank you for, for spending the time with us. You this bet. Was awesome. That was fun. That was, that was been an easy fit right there. <laughs>